start. Are we live? It says we're live. Oh, there we go. We're live. Perfect. Very good. Hi. Welcome to a very, very special episode of That's Normal Book Club. We are here with author Marisha Pessel. We're so excited to talk about Night Film, her book, which we read a couple months ago. Um, so we're refreshing our memories about this fabulous book that we got to discuss. And generally, we do our book clubs at like 10 p.m. on it at night with a glass of wine, but now it's the middle of the day on a Friday, so it's a very unique book club. Um, but I am Becca, and why don't we introduce ourselves down there, starting with Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi. Oh, never mind, Nikki. <laughs> we also have Elena. Elena's frozen on my end. Oh, there she is. Hi, Elena. <laughs> and Nikki. I have teeth. And then, of course, and then, of course, we have author Marisha with us. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking yeah. the time to do this. Oh, my gosh. This sounds really adventurous, so I'm excited to see <laughs> if this actually works. It is. It's adventurous without a glass of wine at 10 p.m., I think. Oh, <laughs> that. that sounds fun, too. But. <laughs> so, so, yeah, Beth, do you want to kick us off with questions yeah. we have about with, for her? I will take this off. I, I love this book, by the way. I, it's one of my favorites that we've done with, for book clubs, so thank you, Marisha, for writing it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one, of the, one of the first things that we noticed is that um, when we were talking about it was we were so um, excited to listening that the culture that Cordova is a part of was real, um, which is that was a part of our pop culture. Yes. Um, so I figured that you must have done a lot of of like background into him and into his films and kind of fully realize what they were like. So my question is, if you did that, would you ever consider writing screenplays based on kind of the realities of his background? Definitely. I mean, part of the creation of the book was really making sure that all of those films in my mind were real. Mm -hmm. So then first when Scott is going through the investigation and so certain lines of dialogue and certain scenes from the films would just feel very natural that he would think of when he was like putting two and two together. So I also love just coming up with all of that and really challenging myself. Um, so when um, the film rights were option for Night Film, I made sure that I kept the rights to all of those films because typically when you give up a book, everything inside, even like a sentence, is owned by the studio, but I really, since I had done so much work on all those narratives, I wanted to hold on to them. So I have, funnily enough, been pro approached by a few directors, uh, like huh. people, uh, like from all walks of life, who are interested in developing them. But right wow. now, I haven't made any decisions. I'm just kind of keeping them under wraps. I might turn them into a novella, some or in some way, I want to build them out. I don't know if that will necessarily be my next project. But um, so I like the idea, um, but in terms of what form it's going to take, it sort of like remains to be seen now. But it is fun people coming to me with their ideas. I mean, some people really have like a slasher film in mind, and they're like, I mean, someone came um, up to me at a reading in LA and wanted to do Isolate, and then yeah, so it's just kind of it's funny which ones like are appealing to people. Connecting. You did. Um you started at school with something in TV and film, didn't you? I read that somewhere. I did. That was my major at Northwestern before I transferred to Barn. Did you um, do you see yourself like ever actually writing a screenplay? Is that something you'd like to explore? Uh, write the screenplay for um, film? Definitely. I think that um, that certainly would be something because I love film and I love all forms of storytelling. But for me, the um, I mean, I think the core of what I love to do is definitely novel writing, simply because you just have so much freedom, and you don't have to worry about paying extras. You can write a scene with like 300 people, and you don't have to worry about like where are we going to shoot? Yeah. Oh, and how, you know. So it's just like it's all in your imagination, and it's all free. Um, yeah. So you really like the canvas is limitless. Um, and when when you're going to film, it's not so much. Now there's more range in television, but. Um, for now, I'm sticking with novels, and then we'll see what happens in the future. Talk a little bit about how this book is interactive, because this is the first. I know that's kind of like a trend. There are some others out there that do this, but this is the first that I've really read, and I just loved that. I mean, it felt like 
Oh, good. It's just so incredible that I felt like I was reading Rolling Stone magazine in that section. You know, it really it felt so real. So did you right. work with an art director on that? Did you create all those pieces yourselves? How did that process come about? Um, well, I wrote the novel always sensing that there was going to be this archival quality because I love sifting through newspaper clippings and old wedding photographs and trying to get a sense of who people were who are no longer with us and sort of building stories around that. So I always wanted it to have this sort of scrapbook quality. When I was writing it, I did all of the designs myself. Mm. Basically culled from magazines, clippings, off the internet. Obviously when I turned it into Random House, I had the rights to none of those photographs and any of the visual material. So after I turned in the novel, I guess that was a year ago, around a year ago, then I started working with a graphic designer to make um, to bring what I had already started com to make it come to life. But then this graphic designer, his um, his name was Tristan Wood Scallon, and he works at Kennedy Monk, and they're based in London. And um, and we together just like you know really started curating this stuff. And we had a photographer, and just a, it was actually like another like a separate art project that was overlapping. Yeah. And just making sure that it was also mysterious enough for readers to be able to, when they have a visual, that they can still like use their imagination to take it, um, to make it alive for themselves. Cool. So, what are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? Oh, I'm reading, oh, and I actually love it. Um, I'm reading that book called S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst. I don't know if you guys have checked this out. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't read it. Okay, talk about an interactive book. It's actually filled with literal clippings and photographs. Like, the book itself is like a work of art. It's a library book with all of these pages stuck inside. And then um, two people are writing in the margin, and they're sort of having this... Um, I mean, it's an adventure story. It's a, like, finding clues. I mean, it's right up my alley in terms of, like... You know the adventure story where two people are trying to figure something out. So um, I'm only in the very beginning, but it's an entirely different reading experience as well because it's just this physical book, but you're not reading it straight through. You're going to the margins. You're going to these like um, photographs inside. So it's very cool. Um, that brings me to a point that I I felt about your book, like because when I bought it, I tweeted or I sent everyone a picture of it when I first bought it because I love the way it's bound. It's oh, good. Beautiful. It just feels like a dense book. Like some books you pick up and they just feel like a regular book. For some reason the, the pages are thin, but it's dense and I loved it. So yeah. I like the actual physical experience. But yeah. It makes me wonder like how do you feel about night film as an ebook? Do you feel like the the experience falls off a little bit or you tell I read it? Well, oh, well, yeah, I think, well, I, I've heard mixed reviews of it. I think on some versions of the Kindle, it's very hard to like see some of those things. So I knew doing something like this, the technology might not be so specific that everything's yet in place for you to have like a perfect user experience. I mean, I still read hardcover. I mean, I've tried reading on an iPad, and there's something about like interacting with a book. It doesn't feel full enough to me. Um, it's harder for me to get into a story for whatever reason. I think I just don't like looking at a screen when I, I usually read at night. So, um, so I still read physical books, and that's what I prefer. But um, I understand. I mean, it's great when you're on vacation; you can download five, ten books to your iPad. So, um, but I prefer the physical version. Sure. Can we talk about the ending real quick? Sure. And I don't know how, what you want to talk about or what you can say, but I feel like there was like this moment where I was like, "Oh, this book is going supernatural," and then I was like, "Oh no, no, it's not. It's in the real world." And then at the end, I was like, I'm not sure what happened. Like, I think it did, but yet it still doesn't. And so I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to feel or if I just, like, need to reread it, and maybe I'll feel differently the second time around. Um, right. And I just wanted to talk about what the reactions have been to that and what, you know, how does it end in your mind? Or is that well, open-ended? I always wanted to set it up so there are two explanations at the very end. One is that it's entirely rational, um, that Scott pushes mm -hmm. envelope in terms of his own sanity at times because he's so deeply involved in the story. Or on the flip side of that, um, a, the world that is enchanted where wild things are possible and um, taking a rational man and over the course of this journey making him believe in things in which he never thought he would. 
Um, and then at that point, it's really up to the reader of which version to choose. How are you going to um, make heads or tails of your reality? Is it oh, is everything explicable? Are human beings able to understand, or can you be comfortable with a sense of the unknown? I have my um, own views, but I think what does the author know? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other side where I always love because I feel like your imagination is so much fuller than mine. I love when the author tells me what to think at the end. I know that's a really stupid thing to say. I like coming up with my own things, but I do also like to be like, this is your idea. So I always, I'm always interested to hear your perspective. Well, full disclosure: I believe in a world in which like anything is possible. And okay. Okay. I mean, I have to, this is what I debate, like, even in my personal life all the time, like, the unknown. How do we know? What do we know? I mean, are we really able to decide what's real and what isn't? So I'm always grappling with that. But um, I think even in the course of writing Night Film, having investigated witchcraft and some of these other occult practices mm. that definitely have, like, a, a following in this day and age, it made me kind of um, even further into the camp of um, of being okay with the unknown and a world where really wild things can happen and not everything can be explained by science. Cool. Cool. Um, to wrap it up, we love asking the folks that we interview what they're obsessed with right now. Oh my gosh, what am I obsessed with? Well, I'm obsessed with um, like death metal concerts. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going to a lot of rock concerts lately. Um, what else am I obsessed with? Um, oh, I actually... Oh, I saw Bill Cosby recently. Oh, wow. Like, and, um, performing? I did at, um, at this benefit for... Oh, I can't even remember the name of the benefit. It was a few weeks ago. But he's back, basically. Aww. And it's funnier than he's ever been. And, um, and I've always been a long-time fan. So to see, like... Mr. Huxtable, like up there. <laughs> That's I'm awesome. Really cool seeing him. What else have I been up to? I don't know. I mean, having been back on book tour, like I was traveling for basically three months, so now right. I'm just recharging and writing again, and um, kind of enjoying the city and everything. So, what is next for you? I assume you're working on something you can't talk about yet, or are you talking about it? Uh, I'm not talking about it, but I'm working. Yeah, I'm working on my next book. As, as as interesting as that sounds, yeah. Just like there was a there was kind of a break between your last one and this one, right? Like a yeah. long break, wasn't there? Well, yeah, I think mm -hmm. like it was the sort of thing like I was working on like seven different projects at once, and then I had to sort okay. of then at some point my team, my editor was like, okay, like maybe you should just do night film and make it pull that off. So um, now I'm just working on one book and uh, hopefully it will not be seven years. I don't anticipate <laughs> I don't anticipate that this one will be as kind of um, wild as night film. But we'll see. I mean who knows? I don't like to kind of I'll say it's the same thing and then it'll turn out to be the complete opposite. So who knows? You just That's good. You sort of have to let these things happen. And Right, as they may. Well, thank you so much. We are so excited to see what's next for you and really appreciate the book. And it was such a great read for our book club, and we recommend it to lots of people. So thanks again for doing this. Thank you guys so much. It was really fun. Bye. 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 Bye.